What's going on guys? We got a Ranger 570 transmission in the shop today. We're going to have to replace the output shaft on it. If you look at this one, you can tell it is very badly wore out from a lack of maintenance. So we got a new output shaft here. Here's the part number. And we have a new output shaft seal. If you're looking for a video on how to pull this transmission, I have one on YouTube. So go check us out at Crank It with two T's. So the first thing we're going to do to replace this output shaft is we're going to take our shifting arm off, take our shift sensor off, and get into here where our shifting gears are at that work our arm here and take them off, then take our bolts out and start splitting our transmission. When you take this cover off, these gears are just gonna pop in and out. We'll show you how to put them together when we go back to reassemble them this. Now that we got all this done, now we're gonna remove all our bolts and start splitting our case part. So once you got all your bolts out, you've got three pry points on this case. You've got one here. You've got one here. You've got one here. Get you some screwdrivers or some pry bars and gently pry this part. It's gonna be stuck and it's gonna take some working with to get everything to come apart. Once you get your case part, it's gonna look something like this. Now the piece we're gonna to have to get down to is our snorkel gear and output shaft. So all this has to come out. This has already fell loose, so we're gonna take it out. Get your shift forks. Once we get all that out of the way, if you flip it up on your side and work these three at the same time, you can, and it does take some time, but you'll get it to where you can get them to fall out. One thing we forgot to record is before you pull your, this is your clutch output shaft, your secondary clutch output shaft. It has a lock ring on it. You have to pull that lock ring off before you pull this. So now it's time to remove our snorkel gear shaft. We've got these Allen heads. This one here is a lock that locks the snorkel gear nut. Once you get all them out, just pull this out, lay it to the side. Now it's time to pull our seal so we can get to our snorkel gear nut. 
one of the best ways I found to remove this seal is just simply using a screw to go in there. You want to stay away from the case so you don't damage the threads for your output shaft nut and just simply go in. And as you can see, sometimes they'll start pulling the seal like yourself. Other times you have to get you a claw hammer and pull it like you're pulling the nail. So they do make a sock for this. I get it, not everybody's gonna have one. When you get in here, this should be loose. But we got the lock out of it. This just simply unscrews. So once you get it all the way unscrewed, just simply pull. Comes right out. Now it's time to disassemble this so we can put our new output shaft on. So now that we got this out, we're going to remove this lock ring that's down in here. We got a spacer. Spacer goes on top of the bearing. We got another lock ring here. Tell this transmission's had water in it. Well, I got that lock off. It was rusted. We got another shim. Now this part right here, guys. I hate to say it, but you're going to have to have a press. We have to press this bearing and this gear and everything off along with this bearing. Now, yes, we could get away with some different methods on this bearing, but for this gear and stuff, we're going to have to have a press. So let's show you how you're going to do that. So let's remove this lock ring here. It's on the back of our output shaft. This one is rusted as well. All right, we finally got it broke loose. Take that one off, set it to the side by itself. Now, if you're wanting to, you can try taking you some blocks and tapping all this off. You do take a chance of damage, damaging this gear here. I don't want to take a chance of doing that, so I'm going to use the press. Okay, I've decided to do this the old-fashioned way, so to say. I understand a lot of people ain't going to have access to a press. So if you can get you a bearing remover like this, and just simply some 6x6s, six 4x4s, six, four however you want to do it, this be a way you can remove your bearings. I normally wouldn't say to beat on a shaft like this, but this one is bad. We're not gonna be reusing it. So you can hammer away on this one without having to worry about damaging it. As you can see, we've removed that without damaging our bearing at all. <clears throat> now you can remove your output shaft nut. Now it's time to move on to our bearing and our gear. So for this part, you wanna flip the shaft upside down and make sure that whatever you're prizing it against does not land on this collar that you're pushing flat against this gear. I just took our bearing puller, flipped it upside down, I got it loose to where it falls down in there and it's sitting flat. I'm gonna drive this one out. Just like that. So now that we got everything off, we got our new output shaft, now it's time to reassemble. So we're gonna start with the gear. That's the last time we took off. Set it on here. 
Now for this, you can take your block of wood and put here, or use your punch. I would use a block of wood. Just remember this area on the bottom is splined. So make sure you get it on there good. Once you get it on there, get everything set up, drive it down. So we got this one drove on and when we was taking this off and everything, this spacer came off the bottom here. So it goes on before your snap ring goes on. And that part's done. Now we got our gear and burn on. It's time to put our output shaft nut on. So now we got our output shaft nut on. We're going to take our bearing, slide it on. Got it done as far as it can go. Take your bearing puller. We got our two blocks here. We're going to flip this over where it fits solid up against it. Now, you're just going to tap down on this. This is where it's good to have an extra set of hands. You can get someone to hold the block. There we go. This part, just get your nut started onto your bearing, and it should just slide right up on there. Should. If not, you can give it some love. Now we have our shim, our lock ring. I'm going to pull this all the way up. We got a shim. And another lock ring. So now that we got everything cleaned up, we got the insides of our case cleaned out and everything, now it's time to reassemble. So we're gonna start with our output shaft. We're gonna slide it back in. Tighten it back down, get it started. So we got our output shaft nut stuck, snugged up. Our next step is to put our differential in. Our next step is going to be installing our snorkel gear. And sometimes you have to work these to get them down inside the housing. It's a tight fit. So now we got our snorkel gear installed. We got our plate lined up. The next thing you want to do, make sure this is all the way down and check, I call it checking your backlash. And you're going to come over here and you're checking to see how much gap you have between the gear on this output shaft and the gear on this snorkel gear. If it's too much, then you're going to loosen this just a little. If it's not enough, then you're going to tighten it. And what that does is it pushes that in and out. And you want just enough to where you can't really hear it, but you can just barely feel it. That's going to allow fluid to get in there to make sure nothing runs dry. Then we're going to get everything tightened down, come back and recheck it. This part right here, 
This is what I call your locking bolt. This goes down in here and locks. It goes through the snorkel gear nut and locks itself in there. You will want to use Loctite on these. Okay, on this part right here, like I said before, this is our locking bolt. You're going to want to make sure that this right here screws down in here, no problem whatsoever. It just goes in smooth. There's no resistance. As you can tell, I just screwed this one all the way down by hand. Now, of course, you're not going to want to go back and tighten it up. But by doing that, we know that it has went through that nut where its teeth are at, and it is locked. So that nut won't back out or thread in or anything. It's locked itself in place. By doing that, now we know that our backlash is set right. Everything is turning smoothly. We're going to go through and tighten the rest of these up, come back and check it, make sure everything's still turning freely. Then we're going to move on to our next step. All right, guys, we got our output shaft put back in. We got our snorkel gear put in. We got our plate with our bolts. We got our lock bolt in. Got our backlash set and everything. Everything's moving freely. Now it's time to move on to our next step. For this next part, we got three other shafts that are going to go in. One I call just an idler. The other one is your one that's got all your gears on it for reverse and such. And then you got it connects to your output shaft that goes on your secondary clutch with your reverse chain. These you have to put in kind of simultaneously. You gotta work them all three in together. <clears throat> so it helps if you got your transmission up to where when you put your output shaft in, it's got somewhere to go and it don't hit your table or anything. Again, this, this is the way I do this. I'm not saying it's right, I'm not saying it's wrong. There we go. We got everything working like it's supposed to. Everything's turning. Neutrals is working. Lows is working. So now we got to put our shift forks in and the part that works off our gear shifter that is inside our cab. So when you go to put your shift forks in, if you're working on it like I am, where you got your output shaft to your left, you got the output shaft to your secondary clutch that's straight in front of you. These alignment pins here are gonna be closest to you, and this one's always in the middle. And you're just gonna take this, and you can move it with these springs. I'm trying to do this where y'all can see it. Just like that, it's gonna slide in, push it down into its spot. And as you see, the top fell right in. Just like that. This piece here, I'm not sure the proper word for it. Me and other mechanics always call it shifting drum, but it goes in right here. And once again, you're just gonna wiggle it around till it falls in place with your forks. All right, now we got that in. Now we're ready to put both our cases together, we're gonna to clean up our sealing points here, get our sealer put on it, put both our cases together. The sealer you'll need to use for this, if you go to my YouTube channel, I have it listed in the description of my videos. This sealer that I use, they use on transmissions, uh, cases on motors, and all different other things you can find 
I highly recommend using it. Now that we got our sealer on both halves, it's time to put them together. When you're going back together, such as right here, if you're not careful, these seals will try to roll out with you. It's best when you get to this point, you can take your pick and you can roll them back in. It doesn't hurt them. Just roll them in like that. And then you're gonna continue just easing it down. If you catch it rolling again, then you can repeat the process. Now that we got our case in, next step you're going to do is go around and put all your bolts in. And then when you go to tighten them, you're going to have some bolts that ain't going to go in because of your transmission mount. But you're going to crisscross them the best you can, get them all snug, then go back and tighten them all up in a crisscross pattern to make sure this case doesn't go down and get twisted around on one of them bearings. You can use an impact on this stuff right here. If you know what you're doing, pay, pay close attention. Because we're not tightening this down, we're snugging it. So next thing we're gonna be doing is assembling the shifting mechanism. We've got this gear here, and at the top of this gear here, you can see that it has a slot that is bigger than the rest of them. It's keyed, and it goes on this right here a certain way. We also have this right here. This right here is the shaft that your shifting arm hooks to. That's on the outside of the transmission. It also has a keyed slot that this gear right here goes on a certain way. And this gear right here fits on this hole. <clears throat> now you're going, there you've got, if you look in here, you've got a notch here and then on this other gear, you've got two notches. Now, you want them to line up with each other when this thing is in working order. So when you line these up correct, like this, and what this does, it helps keep this gear over here that's on your shifting arm from hitting the case, because if this is not lined up right, then you will not have enough room to shift it without it hitting the case. So now it's time to install our little star gear here. It too is keyed with this shaft here. Now it's time to install our spring. Now it's time to put our sealer on here and put our cover on. Now that we got all our gears in and everything, got our sealer on the cover. Time to install this. We got a dial pin right here. Give it just a little bit of love. Same thing about these, when you go to put them on, tighten them up in a crisscross pattern. To make sure we don't snap this because it is thin. We got the marks from where our tabs were at. So we're going to put them back. So this is going to hook to our wiring harness that's on the machine.
So now that we got this tightened down, time to install our shift sensor. It's going to go on there just like that. Just spin it around so there we go. Not on that side there. So now we're going to install our shifting arm. It too is slotted or keyed so it fits on here a certain way. Got a nut, but we're going to tighten down. All right, we got a shifting arm on. It's time to move over here. We got to put our snap ring back on our output shaft. Just like that. Now, we gotta put our new seal right here where our output shaft comes out at. Take our seal, slide it down on here, get it started best we can. That's that. That's how you replace your output shaft on a Ranger 570. Now, if you guys find this video helpful, please drop us a like, subscribe to our channel, leave us a comment, go check us out on, we're on TikTok, we've got a YouTube channel, we've got an Instagram page, and we're on Pinterest. Thanks for watching.